Hello, all you beautiful people, and we're going to be talking about Nancy Drew, the thing that brought us together, the thing that is probably, maybe not most impacted, but definitely has had a bit of impact on both of our lives. Mm -hmm. But, you know, before we get into that, uh, I think we should talk a little bit about what we've been doing, how we've been in the past week. Um, My life was kind of a little bit of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. All of the little preschoolers brought their little preschool germs. Gross. And uh, <laughs> the one, uh, our main teacher and me, like, were really sick. Like, she was really badly sick. Like, oh, she was, no. Like, her and her kids were all, like, massive throwing up. It was so bad. I didn't throw up, but, like, I was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like violent too. Like she, she was not doing well. I was not doing well. And then I started my period, and I was like, hmm. And it was like I hadn't. It was like I wasn't on. Because part of the reason I take my birth control is I have um, a her- hormonal imbalance. I produce slightly more testosterone than is normal, mm-hmm. and it uh, it messes with me a little mm-hmm. bit. And it was like, it felt like before I was on my birth control and my like emotions were all over the place and they were like not my emotions. I didn't know why I was feeling things I was. And then I was like super depressed and then I was like, oh this is just But we're here. We're all better. of the feelings. We're here. Mm. <laughs> it was literally all of the feelings <laughs> at once and I was like, I hate everything. <laughs> Aww. But uh yeah, I don't know. It was just a nightmare. But, I don't know. I always feel like the start of the week, because I start out the week seeing the kids. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if I can just get to Monday and, like, get into class, I know I'll feel better. Because they're so, like, unapologetically themselves. They're so happy and bubbly and cheerful that I'm like, how can I be sad and miserable Mm -hmm. when I'm, like, surrounded by all this joy? Aww. So... What was what was your week like? Uh, <laughs> Hopefully better than mine. It was, yeah. No, we are um, house sitting for my parents, and it's been lovely. So we're back in my hometown, which I really don't spend a lot of time in. Um, but we have been going out to eat at a variety of places. We have been seeing some friends, some of my good friends. We've been drinking beer and alcohol and wine from my parents' stores, storages. So that's been great. Um, Yeah, the weather was really nice this weekend, so we were able to get out and walk. And I've just been really kind of for the first time been able to show my fiance a lot of where I grew up, because usually we just come to my parents' house, hang out for a while, and then get on back home so it was our first time really running around and exploring my hometown and him getting a feel of this is what my life was before I (laughs) left to go off to college so it was cute that's so wholesome Mm -hmm. I love that Mm -hmm. so do you uh like where you guys live now is that like kind of far away from where you grew up like is it is there like a big difference between them it's Where I grew up was a lot more in the woods, and then I live in a fairly urban environment now. I mean, it's suburban, but, like, there's, you know, it's not just houses. And so, um, right. yeah, it's a, it's, a different, it's a different world. And he grew up uh, in farmlands and also a rural area, so Mom. he and I are both adjusting and growing (laughs) in this city life but it's not what we grew up with would you say you guys or i don't maybe you can't speak for him but like do you guys prefer kind of where you live now or do you do you feel like you it was maybe like more natural not natural that's not the right word i don't know like do you prefer where you live now or do you miss kind of like where you grew up We both grew up around a good amount of nature, and so we do miss that. We love the walkability of our area because we still have a good amount of nature Mm -hmm. um, where we are, but 
there's a lot of development and a lot of housing. And so it's, it's, a, it's a different feel, but we love the ability to be able to walk right. and not have to drive 10 minutes to get to the nearest grocery store or a restaurant or, you know, being 10, a 10 minute drive from anything you would yep. want to do <laughs> is it's fine. It's not a big deal, especially if you're driving amongst trees mm -hmm. and you're not on a highway the whole time, but the walkability, especially for kids and for younger people who don't necessarily have access to a yep. car all the time, it's just a different environment than what we grew up with. When I was in college, I studied abroad and lived in London for like four months, which was a really big change because like, like you were saying, like <laughs> we're, we're uh, suburban. Is, I don't know if that's the right word. Like, we are, like, neighborhoods and stuff, but we're definitely, like, a lot of nature and everything, which I really love. And so, like, living in, like, a city city was a very strange adjustment. And I could, I could appreciate it, and I could appreciate the benefits of it, but I was also just, like, nature sick. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say homesick, but, like, it made me kind of depressed a little bit. And... Like, when we visited Norway and stuff, I was, I remember, like, I wanted to kiss the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Trees, I've missed you. <laughs> and we did, like, a nature walk and stuff, and I was like, yeah, I, the city life is not for me. I could not do it for more than increments of time. Mm -hmm. It just made me so sad, which is really weird, if you think about it, because I feel like in the city, you know, you're constantly surrounded by people so why would you feel lonely but cities because of their nature and because of the people who live there there's less of a mm -hmm. need or incentive to get to know people around you because people are moving because people are in and out because people True. don't put down roots they're like well i'm gonna live in this apartment for one maybe yep. two years and then i'm gonna scoot off and live somewhere else versus being in more of the suburbs or just being around more houses where people are like, nope, I'm going to live here for 10 years. My family's going to be here. My kids are going to grow up here. Maybe my grandparents lived here. Maybe my parents lived in the town, but just elsewhere. And now we've moved here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the putting down roots and therefore wanting to create a community around you where you can connect because you know, you're yeah. going to be there for a long time, which is something maybe you don't get in the city we have a cabin up north and it is definitely in a city that like you're not having a lot of civilization that's not the right well yeah like there's not a lot of civilization you know you don't have your conveniences that you have you know closer to the cities and i feel like part of that like why that's also different is it's not just your roots but also like your neighbors mm -hmm. are who you have to depend mm -hmm. on like when something goes wrong sometimes they are all you have so, like, I also feel like that's part of the incentive to get to know them and be friendly and stuff. Because you'll never know if they're going to come over and need yeah. butter, you know, or <laughs> you're going to need to give an egg. So when, yeah. when <laughs> literally the stereotype, can I have a cup of sugar? <laughs> but when you're in the city and everything is at your fingertips and everything's convenient and you can get everything and do everything for yourself, mm -hmm. again, there's no incentive to try to interact with somebody else who can help you because you don't need help in your day-to-day -day life. Yes, I totally agree. And speaking of people who need help, everybody we run into as Nancy <laughs> Drew. <laughs> oh, the chores they always have for us. Oh my goodness. Yes, hence all of my pay Nancy emotes. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> Give up. <laughs> give us our wage we are working hard we deserve it please white wolf we are looking directly at you <laughs> <laughs> call it out call it out i love it i think we i think we move into it i think we move into the timeline uh this this is all you this is your time <laughs> to shine your two days of research <laughs> has all accumulated to this like we've talked about nancy drew is really how we connected uh, it's been a big part of our lives kind of for a very long time at this point. 
and we wanted to talk about where Nancy Drew came from, what other media talks about Nancy Drew, includes Nancy Drew, how her character is kind of changed and developed throughout the decades, and then um, we'll talk more about the games themselves. But for anyone who doesn't know, the Nancy Drew character was created by Edward Stratemeyer just a few years after he created the Hardy Boys. So he made the Hardy Boys, he created those characters in 1927, and then three years later he came out with Nancy Drew because there was such an appetite for a girl to do similar things to the Hardy Boys. Somehow in the 30s or in the late 20s, they were like, hmm, what if girls were also somebody who we (laughs) catered to? Blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. I I so genuinely thought it was a female author who was like, who was inspired by the Hardy Boys and was like, I'm gonna, you know, I want to make a character. Like when you told me that, I was like, I was so mind blown. My foundation was absolutely <laughs> shooketh. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so interesting because both the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew had um, ghostwriters and Caroline Keene, of course, was the Nancy Drew author, quote unquote. Um, while a whole variety of people wrote her story. And so they had a similar situation for the Hardy Boys. And so the first Nancy Drew books were published in 1930. Nancy was originally 16. There's a lot of discussion about, well, is Nancy 16? Is she 18? There's a lot of confusion about that. She was originally listed as 16 because at the time, that was the earliest someone could graduate high school. So they wanted her to be still a teenager, but kind of on the fringes of adulthood. And so at the time in the 30s, that was 16. And then in the 60s, they made her 18. So they aged her up. So that's why kind of in that core group of books, that core series, she's 16. But then in later books and a lot of later adaptations, she's 18. Other adaptations made her, you know, 20 or 21, just as we kind of age up and want to get her a college graduate or in college, just so we can have some different adventures. Did they ever explicitly say she was 16 or was it open-ended and that's why it was confusing? Or like, why why was there so much confusion about her age? There were main 56 books that were started in the 30s and went on and were published until the 50s. So kind of that core 56 books, they have been done and redone to remove racist stereotypes and to make other adjustments to modernize them, take out harmful pieces. So they're definitely not the same as they were, but it's kind of those core stories. Um, And in those, it always said, okay, so Nancy Drew is 16. She looks like this. She likes this. You know, they'd have a whole little character bio in the first few paragraphs of the book, just to kind of get everyone's mindset in the right direction. So yeah, they were explicitly. Yeah. Now that you say Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So at later series, I think then they would reference like, Oh, she's 18 and blah, blah, blah. But um, there were a whole variety of series in the 60s. So, so there's that core book of the thirties to the fifties. And since it was created by, The guy who created the Hardy Boys, who was used to writing male characters, that's why Nancy has a lot of traditionally male attributes of her assertiveness and her ability to do things on her own, which is just so unusual for writing about a young girl at that time, kind of with that widespread media power. In the 60s, when they made her 18, they also removed some of those because Uh, There was, you know, gentle dismay about, oh, well, she's being such a tomboy. We want her to be more shy and retiring and more of a lady figure, therefore being a better role model for young girls at the time based on what they wanted young girls to be doing. In the 90s, then there was kind of a spinoff series where Nancy's going to college and otherwise aging her up. So then they can add in some more adult themes, add in a little bit more, you know, Makeout scenes by reader request. One of those series had her break up with Ned, so then she could be a single girl in college. So there was just a whole variety of series. There was um, in the 2000s, there have been a couple attempts of reigniting series where there would, did tween Nancy. Um, then they did some graphic novels, there were some comic books. 
the comic books and the graphic novels were okay, but the tween Nancy series uh, was canceled fairly early based on a bunch of negative reviews because there was a dislike of how the character was portrayed. Are you saying they were remakes or like they are trying to carry on from past series? Yeah, carry on from past series, basically take the character in a new direction that is more modern because the 30s and the 50s series, that original series, you know, Nancy is solving little petty crimes of rich people. Like, you know, a mink stole was stolen or, a, yeah. you know, it's it was just a different kind of type of mystery she was solving and then as you get more modern then she's solving murders or she's solving kidnappings and she's put into peril more often than just being locked in a cabinet so they kind of drama it up in the 90s they were very much like paperback pulp fiction vibes okay i have a very specific scene that i read from nancy drew i don't know which book it is from but it was like my worst nightmare she ended up i don't remember how i don't remember what in but she was like trapped i'm pretty sure she was tied and there was like a poisonous spider in the dark room with her and i was like that's my worst nightmare i swear it's i well okay now it would be awkward if it's not nancy drew but i swear it was a nancy drew book i was reading Mm -hmm. for a school project and i was like that's scary. <laughs> You're like, now I gotta look. <laughs> I gotta look. Well, it's funny because I enough. can remember the cover art for it. I have it down in my room. Out of those... Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Out of those 56 books, I have, I think, 50 of those originals. Um, and a handful of those are uh, copies from when my mother was a kid. And then the other ones were ones that I just I have some of those too. acquired. Because um, when I was young, there were, you know, they were selling like six of them together in a little bundle. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. So every once in a while, I'd be able to convince yeah. my parents uh, to let me do it. I think there was a diamond on it. Oh, this is going to drive me Sp- the All spider sapphire that, mystery like, that one scene was that it where there was is that what it a is a sapphire and a nice big um spider diamond yeah well yeah the spider sapphire mystery all i know is that that series scarred me. <laughs> that, that scene scar- the scarred me because i have borderline almost arachnophobia mm-hmm. not quite but like I'm very close. Like the fear spiders give me is very <laughs> immense, and I was like, if that had been me, oh heck no, <laughs> like, no, 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 no. But I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad you remember. I'm glad I wasn't crazy about. Yeah, that. I could absolutely <laughs> visualize it. But I know it's funny because reading through the books, and it's and I we'll we'll talk a bit, little bit about this when we get to the games. But rereading through the books just reminds me so much of how how the Nancy Drew mysteries are structured more of a Sherlock Holmes detective, where it's not a whodunit. You yeah. know the bad guys based on vibes. She's rocking or rolling, and she's just trying to expose them or catch them in the act. But you don't have a cast of characters that you're trying to figure out who's the actual baddie which is what the games are structured around because that's how that makes sense. Yeah. So I get it, but it's it's kind of a bit of a reason why the games struggle a little bit with the plot is because that is not how the Nancy Drew books are structured. Like sometimes, of course, there'd be a little twist or a, a surprise extra villain who was part of it who you didn't expect. But for the most part, you knew who the bad guys were when you ran into them because they were actively stealing from someone or they were they were doing something bad and you could tell that they were bad people and nancy just had to figure out how to trap them ironically at my one of my favorite parts about the game is that it's more like a whodunit because i find that more interesting oh absolutely (laughs) but i still love the books like i still loved how the books were yeah for any puzzle you're solving on your own in game version absolutely i think you have to have it as a whodunit i don't know if it would make more sense to like 
reveal or have Nancy have to put together the pieces, kind of like with Sherlock Holmes, where if you've played any of those games, you do have to put together all of the pieces as things go. But until you have the final pieces in the puzzle, then you figure out the actual direction it goes. Yeah, I have played a couple of Sherlock games and I did like that about them. But I'm also like, I'm not quite sure how they would implement that into mm-hmm. the games. Like the way they have the game structured now that like, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Structure wise, I think what they're doing is absolutely just fine. I don't have an issue with it. That's yeah. where there's a disconnect that comes through with trying to adapt stories from the Nancy Drew series to games. into yeah. games. So that's why they pretty much take vibes. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to talk a bit about the media and the movies? Yeah. The first book came out in 1930, as I said. Just seven years later, yeah. Warner Bros. bought the right to the series. So like within seven years, Wait, Warner really? Brothers was just like, oh, this is a cash cow. Let's go. They bought it for $6,000, which is about $120,000 today. The person who had the rights to it agreed to this with, what's his face, Warner, Mr. Warner, um, without a lawyer or anyone else Mm -hmm. supporting her with it. And there were famously very regretful (laughs) feelings about that which I do not blame her. Warner Bros, within a couple of years of that purchase, so right at the end of the 1930s, um, they had four movies come out about Nancy Drew and promoting one of the films. Right. Warner Brothers created a Nancy Drew fan club where the lead for one of the Nancy Drew movies was kind of like the person who was like the honored guest. Um, but they had rules based on what they thought a typical target audience girl um, would be interested in and would have. And so one of the rules right. for this Nancy Drew fan club was that you must have a steady boyfriend. Wait, what? So. Just because Nancy had a steady boyfriend, I don't understand why well, that yeah, would mean. Because you want to be just like Nancy. To have one. You have to have a Ned. What what is Nancy without her Ned? You're my Ned. Ah, thanks, Gabe. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, I want to be best. I want to be best. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, we'll fight over okay, it. Okay, you can be best. <laughs> I know you can be best. By that <laughs> best was always my favorite. Honestly, underrated. Absolutely. Oh, poor Bess. <laughs> poor Bess. Because yeah. in the books, so it starts out where Nancy is best friends with a girl named Helen. And in the first couple books, she's always talking oh, about yeah. Helen Corning. Helen is right. great. She's I think she's a couple years older than Nancy. I don't really know how they met, but she's a couple years older. She gets engaged in book two, The Hidden Staircase. So I think she then trots off and goes and gets married. And so that's just a whole thing. I love it so much because... Surely she's older than... Yeah, I think she is a couple years older than Nancy. And Nancy's just riding along in a car with her at the beginning of The Hidden Staircase. And Helen is just grinning from ear to ear. And Nancy's just like, what's going on? And Helen's like, I'm engaged. And Nancy's like, to who? What? (laughs) (laughs) Left field, what? Basically. Where? <laughs> yeah. So then in later books, then they bring in um, these two cousins who are Nancy's best friends named Bess, and Bess Marvin and George Fain. George is like a tomboy, slim, has basically a um, short brunette hair. She's just like an athlete. And then Bess is the polar opposite where she's got like long blonde hair. She's like a little pudgy. They talk about that a lot. Um, Just like a total girly girl, loves shopping, loves boys, major flirt, that sort of thing. They So the books, it it was Shadow Ranch when they were introduced, right? Was it? I, pretty, I think it was because I remember when I played the games and all of a sudden Shadow Ranch came. I was like, wait a minute, isn't this when they were introduced? But then I was like, but we already know them. And I was, I, I remember like, what, what the heck? I think, I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Shadow Ranch was when Nancy kind of like got to know them or something, or I don't really remember. 
I'm doubting everything now. I'm like, oh no, what if that's not it? I'm going to have to go and investigate. I mean, Shadow Ranch is only book five, so I think that would make sense. Um, yeah. I mean, but because they definitely aren't in two. So, I mean, right. they're in three, I, four, I, or five. I, you keep going. I'll look. I think that makes I'll sense. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, moving on... Uh, so those four movies came out then in the 1970s, there was a short series where it was the Hardy boys and Nancy drew mysteries. Cause some episodes focused on the Hardy boys, some focused on Nancy that didn't do very well. Later episodes, they, um, kind of tried to do more of Hardy boys focus with Nancy as kind of a side character that also didn't do well. There was a 1995 13-episode Nancy Drew series uh, from Canada where Nancy is 21. She's a criminology student in New York City. And then the stories are based on some of those 1990s paperback Pulp Fiction-y books. Nice. Um, I did confirm. Google confirmed. Shadow Ranch was, in fact, that they were introduced. Nice. I don't know where I pulled that out from, but I do remember playing the game and being like, wait a dang minute. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> Hold so. Hold on <laughs> I love it. Because, <laughs> like, when I was younger, I didn't play the games in order. Sure. So, like, there was, like, no time conception for the games for me. So, like, when we got to that game, I was like, wait. Mm. Wait. Mm -mm. <laughs> um... There was a 2002 movie of Nancy Drew that starred Maggie Lawson, who, for anyone who doesn't know, plays Juliette O'Hara in Psych. Um, lovely. I love her. And that also has Nancy in college. So they're really trying to do the aging Nancy up. They uh, That one was supposed to be spinning off into a TV series, but then a variety of things happened. Maggie moved on into a different ABC show shenanigans and then in 2007 there was a new nancy drew movie starring emma roberts which was such a good movie oh. nancy is uprooted from river heights illinois they go to california for carson drew's job nancy is incredibly a fish out of water in her new high school she has a 1950s aesthetic clothing she's an aggressive overachiever uh, which irritates all of her classmates. She's getting hit on constantly by a younger boy who is really bummed that she's she has a long-distance boyfriend. Daniela Monet from Victorious is in it as a mean girl who's really crushing on Ned. Ned is played by Max Therio, who is the older brother of Norman Bates in Bates Motel. Rachel Lee Cook's in it. Bruce Willis makes a cameo. There's just, like, lots happening in that movie, and it's truly delightful i'm sorry total sidetrack if you love max um Thurio, he's in uh a, a series called seal team and like he is like a beefcake like he is is he up in it and i'm <laughs> like i remember when you were ned yes like he is a hot hardcore seal and i okay. want to climb that man like <laughs> Because I still have the love of when he was Ned, and I'm like, mm -hmm. anyways. You cannot unsee it. <laughs> he was just so little. I cannot. I cannot. I know, but he's like, mm -hmm. he's jacked. Like, I. <laughs> anyways, sorry. I think we're going to have to thirst over one yeah. actor <laughs> each episode. Last episode, we are thirsting Honestly, over. Yeah, I'm about it. What's his face from The Witcher? Oh, Henry Cavill. <laughs> Stop. You can't remind me. <laughs> he can't remind me about it. Whew. If that man ever wanted to have a conversation, I would, I would, I would die. I would be like having to try so hard not to be a weird fangirl because I, I don't want to make him uncomfortable, but I'd be like, oh, I just love you so much. And I don't even know you, so it's weird, but, like, I feel like I know you. <laughs> I have no idea who we're going to thirst about next episode. <laughs> but, um, we'll see I it when it challenge. happens. I mean. I accept it. <laughs> so that's the Emma Roberts movie. 
Then there was a 2019 movie, which I discovered on stream because I was playing a Nancy Drew game. Was it Midnight in... S no, it couldn't have been Midnight in Salem. Was it Sea of Darkness? Maybe it was Midnight in Salem because that also came out in 2019. And in the end credits for that game, after it, they played a video preview for this 2019 Nancy Drew movie. And I hadn't heard anything about it. And I was just so confused. Did you see this one? No. Part of me is like, I feel like I know what you're talking okay. about. And the other part of me is like, do I know? I don't know. I don't think it was Sea of Darkness, though. Yeah, I think it must have been Midnight in Salem. Which is weird because that came out at like the way end of 2019. I think the movie did, too. So I think the movie came out, the CW oh, okay. show, and Midnight in Salem all came out around the same time, which is true chaos. But so that's why. So this movie was co created by a variety of people, including Ellen DeGeneres and Wendy Williams. It was called Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. I have to see this movie. I haven't seen it. I have to go see it. But it's it seems to follow the plot of the original book nancy drew in the hidden staircase it seems to follow that along pretty closely obviously it is incredibly modernized so the haunting went viral and that's how nancy hears about it kind of the opposite from when emma's nancy drew gets uprooted from river heights to california this nancy drew moves nancy from chicago to little river heights so she gets she's a fish out of water because she's coming from the big bad city and then she has to go to this boring little town and then the mystery happens if you haven't watched the trailer for it i do recommend it because it is madness nancy is just skateboarding around the humor is very forced the trailer is basically two minutes of people just hyping nancy up being like nancy you're just gonna pick this lock right Nancy, what do you mean? You can just do this science? And they just basically are just telling her how amazing and incredible she is and how talented she is and how she can do everything. And that's the entire trailer of just Nancy's amazing. And so based on reviews similar to Emma's, where they were like, Emma's portrayal of Nancy was great. The movie was whatever. Same here where Sophia Lillis, who was the lead in the It movies who's playing Nancy Drew. Critics say she did a great job, but then the movie itself just sucks. Okay, I just I just had to glance at the trailer mm -hmm. and seeing mm -hmm. it. Okay, I remember I remember watching the trailer in 2019. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, yes, I remember this. And I remember I was not terribly interested mm -hmm. in it because I was like, I don't feel like this is going to be nancy mm -mm. like i don't feel like it's gonna be true to nancy and i was just kind of like i don't know the trailer just didn't do it for me no <laughs> and i think it was salem i think it was at the end of salem that they showed it so now that you bring it up i'm like yeah so salem came out this movie came out and then the cw nancy drew show also premiered in the end of 2019 it's on the CW, so it's following very closely with the artistic choices of Riverdale. It has supernatural and magical elements. Nancy is also 18 in this one. She's solving local murder. The characters do have familiar names like Bess and George and Ned, but their relationships are not what we expect them to be. Yes. No, this is accurate. So this, this is what I'll say. Okay, I only... Like, when it came out, I was very excited. Not that I lost interest. And, like... I was like, Dad, Nancy Drew, they're making TV series for Nancy Drew. We have to watch this. And he he would sit at the kitchen with me, and we watched, like, the first five episodes. Like, the second we could watch them and stream them, I was, we were, we were doing it. We were doing it. At, like, the first episode, I was very, like, frustrated because I was like, none of these characters are, are what they're <laughs> supposed to be, and... Why is why is Ned like a he's not a convict but he is like a convict or something and like why is George running a restaurant and Bess is living in a van and it was just like why are Bess and George not related like I, could, I was having such an existential crisis and dad was my dad was just like Gabriel chill chill it's okay we're getting a different artistic interpretation of Nancy Drew. And I was like, stop speaking sense to me. 
please. <laughs> this is my childhood. <laughs> He's like, it's going to be okay. And then we got to the second episode. And I was like, I was kind of feeling it. I was like, you know, it's okay. It Nancy is more than just the books and everything. Like, she doesn't have to just be the original 56 books and stuff. You know, like, she's more than that. It's okay that they're modernizing her. And I had just, I think, finished watching a lot of the Sabrina mm. that was also, like, CW. And that had kind of stressed me out because it was totally not the Sabrina I grew up with. But I was like, you know, it's okay. It's okay that it's modernized. I can I can be calm. And so then I actually started to enjoy it. And I I love shows that just, like worm their way into your psyche and you're just like you just you don't even know anymore you're like is it supernatural or can they explain this how are they going to explain this and so i actually really love i love that i i haven't watched i have no idea but i was like there has to be supernatural there's no way it, but but also like but it's nancy nancy's never really had supernatural but also i'm always kind of like ooh, i hope she does well i think we're gonna have to watch it now i think we're each gonna have to watch it we're gonna have to spend time discussing yeah. it so tune back in because we will definitely <laughs> have things to say i th i think you'll like it i feel like maybe you'll feel like i did the first episode and feel very like what the heck but it it grows hmm. on you and I love, I love the 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 girl who plays Nancy. I follow her on Twitter, and I, she was like super wholesome. And I, f she was so nervous. She was like, I feel like I have a big responsibility playing this role. Like I have to be Nancy. And I was like, Yes, you do. And you know what? You did it. You owned it. You did it. I'm proud of Aww. you. So I'd recommend it. I want to finish it. I just, you know, things happen. Oh, there's, they're going into the fourth season now. I'm so flabbergasted <laughs> by that. Like, what? It was very Riverdale-esque, which is a little, like, strange, but maybe, maybe it's needed. Maybe it will rejuvenate Nancy and, like, feel, I bring her the popularity she deserves because I feel like Nancy Drew is very highly underrated and I felt like that a lot of my life and I was just kind of like why isn't why doesn't she have more and I think that's because every time the character is played or portrayed people like the person playing Nancy Drew they like the Nancy Drew character and they just think that the rest of the story is mediocre. So I, I think it's really interesting how each uh, piece, each time the character is depicted, people are like, that's a cool thing to do with the character. Great. Sounds good. But then the plot or just the rest of the vibes just don't work. And I think that is because we've got so many portrayals of her with all of those quote unquote masculine attributes. And then we also have pieces coming in of just, well, we want her to be more feminine. And so there's that push and pull, which depending on the portrayal right. can either really work, you know, the Emma Roberts, super girly girl. But of course, she was, you know, doing little badass things and whatever. The um, 2019 version is super tomboy. Like, there's really no girly girl shenanigans. I feel like the CW did, uh, from my perspective and what I remember, this was like, you know, three years ago that I watched this. But I feel like they did a good job of melding the two so she had the feminine side she had a, you know the fashion some of the girliness but like she was also a boss ass biatch and she was assertive and blunt and well no maybe not blunt but she was assertive and like you know <laughs> helping the police solve their case to the point that the one police officer was just like so annoyed with her and like i felt like that was so nancy mm -hmm. but then the other thing that i felt like the cw did really well was I felt like they really portrayed, like, Nancy losing her mom. Like, mm. I feel like sometimes in the... I don't know about the books, but in the games, I just don't... I, I don't know if it's not... I think in every other adaptation, Nancy loses her mom young. Like, younger than 10. And then the CW, right. she's just lost her mom, right? Or pretty recently? Pretty recently, but even that, I feel like even losing your mom at a younger age, 
it affects you, and I feel like that's never portrayed properly, or, like, you don't see Nancy struggling with it as much as I feel like you should, and I mm. like that the CW, which, I mean, I guess because it's fresher, you're gonna see it more, but I still feel like it's, it's a life-changing moment, especially when you're younger, to be missing, you know, that, that much-needed part in your life, because mm -hmm. I feel like you do need the two parts in your life helping to raise you, because you have the two different perspectives, you know what I mean? And, like, to be completely missing one, I think, makes a difference, and I feel like it's never properly shown or given enough time to be shown. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I did really like that about the CW and I liked that there was you saw more visible tension between her and her dad but there was also the like great love that I think I always loved about them. It was like they were really close. They were strongly bonded but then you also got the realistic tension between them and butting heads and him being like worrying about her and stuff you know? yeah because i mean with such an assertive daughter having a lawyer dad i i mean there are gonna be fireworks <laughs> yeah I, surely surely there will be all the the different adaptations have in common is that she's a you know late teens or a young woman who likes to solve mysteries yeah. that's kind of that core piece of nancy drew and so Moving on into the video games yep. where that is the key attribute. She is the player who yep. is a young person, typically, who likes to solve mysteries. And that's really all that she needs to be. So her interactive, uh, who creates these games, that was launched in 95. Since 98, they have released 33 core Nancy Drew games three hidden object games called the Nancy Drew Dossier and a Nancy Drew Codes and Clues app uh, that teaches coding skills. Uh, they also released a couple non-Nancy games, including a Hardy Boys game only for Nintendo DS and some other stuff. I didn't know they did that, the Hardy Boys. I didn't know that Just at all. one. That's interesting. There was a New York Times article that came out in 2000 called Game theory, prowling and spying with Nancy Drew, the Unbarbie. That was the title. They called her the Unbarbie, which I thought was really interesting. And so this article came out right after Message in a Haunted Mansion, which was Game Three. And the article talks about how her interactive um, was using focus groups for young girls to try to figure out how to design games, especially for them. And they discovered during those focus groups that the mothers of those focus group girls were equally as interested and would be heavily involved in solving the mysteries with the girls. So then her interactive started creating focus groups of adult women and mothers to also cater to those demographics when designing the games. And so that's why from the jump, the games were really designed to be simple enough for a child to do, but complex enough for an adult to be also involved. That makes a lot of sense. Like, hearing that, that makes a lot of sense. Because, like, they are geared for a child, but also sometimes they were just on such a level that I don't know how child me figured out. And, like, it was sheer dumb luck. And my my dad, my dad was the one who was always heavily involved in the Nancy Drew games with me. And, like, he would come help a sister out. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense now. I like the games because, yes, with a lot of effort and focus, a child on their own could figure it out. But it also just inspires so much collaboration and let's try to work this out together and mm -hmm. group discussion, which is, I think, yes. why the games translate so well over streaming is because we can all collectively join yeah. together and say, oh, I remember this one thing that we learned previously, or ooh, remember to check this one place that we talked about earlier. And so communicating out your thought process, where you're doing, what you're looking for, where you're stuck, and having that ability to have that group together um, is just really interesting. Yeah. I remember when I was young, I would see advertisements in like Cosmo Girl and Teen Vogue, uh, full-page advertisements for the next Nancy Drew came coming out because 
you know, two were coming out every year. And so you'd see one Wait, really? and they'd be like, it's perfect for a slumber party. And so their ideal was just tweens and young teens, all four of them gathered around a computer, you know, getting to get getting through a whole Nancy Drew in one sitting. That's awesome. I didn't know that. I've never seen any of those. So that's really cool. And I feel like, like you're saying, part of the Nancy Drew experience is experiencing it with someone mm-hmm. else. Like, are you really experiencing Nancy Drew if you don't have someone there with you and you're both just like working on it together, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's really an important piece of the games that Nancy can call Bess and George to talk, to talk through hints, to get hints. Like, I think it's so important that she can phone a friend and talk through that but get to know them like she can talk to them without actively just Mm -hmm. i need a hint like she can learn about what's going on in their lives and she can connect with them and i think that's so important for them to be including yes yes but like you're saying the talking out with them sometimes that stops you from needing to ask from the hint simply just saying to them you won't believe what just happened explaining what happened and then getting their feedback and sometimes that's like that is enough for you to be like oh i need to go do this i should do this yada 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 and i felt like that was huge because who who really wants to ask for a hint? You know, you want to be able to figure it out yourself. Well, especially in the early games when they didn't have a journal and they didn't have a to-do list. Oh, yeah. And so you really, yeah. I mean, calling friends is the only way that you could have the game remind you of what you've done. True, actually. I forgot about that. Senior detective not having the to-do list, sometimes I'm like, I miss the satisfaction of... Haven't done that yet. Done that. <laughs> Check that. You know, like those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's something so satisfying about checking those boxes. There were collections of games where you can kind of bunch them up together a little bit. So between 1998 and 2003, um, it's kind of the three hours long games. You know, that's up to Haunted Carousel, where you really could do it in one sitting wasn't too complicated, pretty linear. So you could just barrel through if you knew where to go. Scarlet Hand is a little bit of a longer one for sure. But for the most part, you know, Treasure in the Royal Tower, Message in the Haunted Mansion. Those ones are pretty straightforward. You can just kind of bebop along. And as long as you remember where to find pieces, um, specifically in Haunted Mansion, you can really just kind of barrel through those. Um, so they're, so those ones, I think, definitely were created for a younger mindset. Yeah, so two th- up to 2003 is those kind of three hours long, probably younger tween. And then 2003 to 2008, there's a collection of games. Uh, that's Deception Island all the way through White Wolf, where we are traveling the world. We're going to Venice, Ireland, England, Hawaii, New Orleans, Canada, France. We're going to the Wild West. We're going to the Pacific Northwest with the Orcas. We're going back in time with Secret of the Old Clock. Like we are moving and grooving through the ages, uh, which is really fun. I don't know why they <laughs> pivoted to all of those exploration areas. But I think in the early games, Nancy was just floating around the U.S. They were like, well, time to go abroad. I think that was I think that was a huge, a huge move. I don't know this for a fact, but I feel like that would have brought in more people, especially because when they picked the theme, like they tried to fully embrace it. And I loved those because you learned more than just like Morse code and stuff like you started learning languages. I think think yeah i think they started doing that really after scarlet hand because i think scarlet hand because that one is so educational i think they got such good feedback from that about like you know you could learn morse code you could learn about the aztecs i think people just really gravitated to that and i feel like that was also one of my favorite things of nancy drew was the educational aspect and the things you learned and then how they translated into like your life and how you could use them. So after that kind of traveling the world 
focus than 2009 to 2015. Uh, that's with that's Waverly Place. That's all the way through Sea of Darkness. So we're going spooky. We're doing much longer games. There's lots of movement and locations in the spaces. You're going to lots of different rooms. Uh, there's a lot more lore involved, so they kept going with that. Uh, a lot of education pieces. They moved into kind of a tiered hint system. Because the games were longer, they needed a lot more support. You spend more time building relationships with characters, so there's a lot more um, kind of side quests involved and a lot of bits and pieces like that. There's just more room to explore and play um, adjacent games or do adjacent tasks that ultimately do kind of come together and help the real world um, and solve the final crime. But you're doing a variety of side tasks for small characters so it's just interesting how that all developed. And then I'm like, I think that was a smart move too, right? Is now that you've got the interest, you've captured a lot of people with the Nancy Drew. Now we have to delve into the lore. We have to grow the characters. We have to learn more to keep them wanting. And having played through the games in order. Mm. One, it's playing them in order. It's super fun watching the development, like how they start getting new technology, how they start redesigning, how they're keeping Nancy with the times and like how her cell phone, you know, evolves and all of that. But also it was like, like I feel that cycle of, okay, you get sucked in and you're going and like you just want to do a mystery and then all of a sudden you're exploring the world and like that's what's keeping you in is you're like okay I want to see the next place because you know as a kid you're not you're not probably traveling across the world mm -mm. or maybe not even always as a young adult or but you're reading about it yeah adult in general like it is right like it's a privilege to be able to travel the world and go to those places so then to have the game bring that place to you you're like like it's it's addictive and you like you want to keep going but then you're kind of like but I want more and then they suddenly start adding more to the lore so like I th I think they did a really bang up job with that and I think that they aged the games up with their audience you know they started yeah, everyone yeah. and everyone was getting introduced young you know the first games you know yep. tweens and then those mm -hmm. kind of between 2000 and or 2003 and 2009, you know, when they're starting to get more of late teenagers um, and then up till 2015, then we can start pulling in the early 20s. And so so they just keep aging things up, yeah. which is great for people who are already fans. I mean, there are definitely some of those later games where. Yeah, I don't I don't know if a 13 year old would be able to do it on their own. Yeah, true. But I could still see them wanting to play mm -hmm. it. Oh yeah. Liking to play it, like enjoying it and and knowing how to get that access on Google like if they need a little bit of extra help cuz I feel like when we were really younger like when I was playing these games I was like 6 7 8 mm -hmm. and like trying to access Google on the laptop to get some help was just not happening not really an option. Well, and where would you find help? Yeah. So there weren't forums. Where would it say that? Again? Where would you get I help? Did, yeah. Uh by No, by by probably I'm trying to remember. There started to be one by the like 7th or 8th maybe there mm -hmm. was like a website and they and they were kind of nice too like they would give you a section and then give you a section so you could try and do it and, and not get I spoiled yeah of it was but like that was where I started yeah and then and then we got midnight in Salem and then we have midnight in Salem <laughs> so very controversial game if you're not familiar there was just this came out in 2019 there was a really big shuffling with her interactive employees. There was a change in game structure and graphics and style. There was a new voice actor for Nancy for the first time since the game started coming out. Um, it was a completely different format. It was the first game fully led by the CEO who started in 2014. Well, the big key thing about it too was that there is, there is a massive time 
like huge time gap from the game before to this like it was a four was it four years right because yeah 2015 to 2019 there's a four-year gap throughout that half the time we didn't even know if we were getting a next nancy drew game and like there was so much back and forth are we gonna have it are we not gonna have it what's it gonna be which like i feel like further fueled everything else and for context before this before or basically up until sea of darkness which came out in 2015 there were one to two nancy Mm -hmm. games coming out each year so having four years between games was shocking was wild we didn't know what to do with ourselves we were totally unsure of what was going on with the company with the layoffs that were going on with just all of the shenanigans we truly just had no idea what was happening um and yeah the night in salem came out in 2019 they got a lot of lashback because they weren't communicating with the fans like they got huge lashback because of their inability to communicate what was going on yeah and we haven't had any official announcement of a new game since 2019 so yeah tbd i guess <laughs> nice um so thinking about the future there have been a lot of attempts at making the games mobile or ipad or kindle or wii or nintendo ds or there's so many other platforms that they have also launched nancy drew games on it's kind of companion pieces Uh, as opposed to a traditional PC format, which is interesting. Wait, before we do that, you have to give us your 60-second opinion on Salem because I know you have huge feelings about that game. (laughs) We want to hear it. I want to hear it. Okay. It needs to be done. So my super quick Midnight in Salem piece is that I know that they spent a lot of time updating the graphics, updating the move style from kind of their traditional point and click. There's just a lot more mobility. There's a whole new uh, 3D style of graphics. I think it's fine. I, I I don't think it's worth losing out on other pieces of the game for that. Um, but I think it's fine. Yeah. I... I'm sad that we lost our voice actress for Nancy Drew, Lana, Man- Lonnie Manella. Lonnie Manella? Yes. Um, I yeah. miss her. At the same time, she was doing the games for 32 games. So I ultimately can't be too upset that they switched her out. It's definitely a bummer, but, you know, stuff happens. And... If that's what made sense to have a younger person who is closer to the business, fine. I, I'm i bummed, but I can't fault them for that. What I can fault them for is, so they changed the game structure. They changed our favorite lead actress, our favorite voice actress. They also changed up the entire format of the game. So it's very much functions as a graphic novel kind of thing or like a story it functions more as a story rather than a mystery they minimize the puzzles until the very end so they spend the first half of the game focusing so much on building out the story most of the nancy drew games have five characters maybe at maximum and then you're figuring out who done it midnight in salem has like Mm -hmm. 15 characters and you have to get to know every single one of them and so that's why the first half of the game is exhausting because you're sitting around getting to know each of these characters every single one of them is unlikable um and you're going around enjoying the vibes of salem learning a little bit but not anywhere near enough um about some of the interesting facts of salem So you're just walking around talking with people who suck um, and not doing any puzzles. And then the second half, 
Mm -hmm. then they are rushing through the plot because all of a sudden they realize, oh gosh, we have to get through the rest of the plot. (laughs) And so then the second half, they move through the plot so quickly you don't know what's going on. They throw some genuinely very good puzzles in at the end. Like I really enjoy with their new mobility, what you can do with the puzzles. They make them more 3D. You're able to do a bit more um, movement with them. So I enjoyed the puzzles. I had a great time. I would have loved for them to have removed dialogue from the front so that they didn't front load it, spend more time building out the actual plot, sprinkling out the puzzles better throughout the game. And I think then we would have been like, meh, yeah. it's whatever. But like, I don't think anyone would have been mad about it. Midnight in Salem is almost too linear like yes nancy drew games are kind of in a sense linear but there still is a little bit of that sense of like open world you're still kind of making your own decisions and doing things at your own pace you're not forced down this one path in a specific order and midnight in salem was very much that and i think that was like a huge drawback because some of the beauty of nancy drew is you like it's more realistic to a mystery you doing bits and pieces and trying to figure it out and going back to here and then okay maybe i can do this now and that and that and that you know it's because they had too many characters not only did they have too many suspects but we also had nancy as the main detective then we had deirdre as a secondary detective and then we brought in frank and joe hardy to be third and fourth detective. And we transfer into Frank and Joe as we do things. Frank and Joe did not need to be involved or Deirdre didn't need to be involved. Why did we have four different detectives? We never act as Deirdre. We call her several times. She's mean and sassy to us. She's the one who gets us involved in the mystery. She could have gotten us involved in the mystery with the phone call and then not been there. Like we didn't need to have her as a side character We transfer into Frank and Joe several times during good puzzles. I don't know why we couldn't have transferred either into Deirdre or just kept as Nancy and let Nancy do the puzzles. I do not understand why we're like, oh, we got to break them off. I, I don't get it. To be fair, I do like that. Like, I agree with what you're saying, but I I did enjoy that Deidre was there because so many times in the series, she, she's almost like an arch nemesis Mm -hmm. to Nancy, like not quite, but, but almost. And you're just, you have, I had such contempt for Deidre and I was just, sometimes I was ready to toss hands Mm -hmm. with her, especially the way she would come on to Ned. Like that's, (laughs) that's my Ned. Excuse me, lady. So I love that we finally got her and to see her in a good light and to be able to talk and get to know her more and like form a connection Mm. with her and an actual Mm -hmm. genuine bond with her and not just, so I liked that. Yeah. But I also (laughs) agree with what you Well, fine. We can keep Deirdre. (laughs) We can just get rid of the Hardy Boys then. I totally have one, one of them needs to go. One of them can go. We don't need both. True. But also. I thirst trapped the Hardy Boys a little bit. <clears throat> Just saying. <laughs> However, this this also extremely peeved me about the game. Ned is so shady. I know you are not a fan of Ned. I love Ned. I feel like Ned was has been done an injustice throughout the whole Nancy Drew games. Like, he really has. And I just want them to finally make the game... Where Nancy and Ned are together solving a case where they can flesh out his character and we can grow to love him. And I hate that the freaking Midnight in Salem, he's being shady. And I was like, man, if you're cheating on me, (laughs) oh, I'm about to come over there. And part of me is is hoping that maybe this is the setup for the game where finally they're going to. Because I think it's hinted at that maybe they need to go on vacation. And obviously, if they go on vacation together, you know what's going to conveniently happen. And so, if they make another game, 
I super, super, super hope the next game is finally Ned. Absolutely. I want Ned. They say it multiple times in Salem yeah. about how Nancy needs to take a vacation. I think one of the final lines is she's promising Ned that the two of them are going to go away together. So absolutely. They okay. have to, they set I it up. So. I I thought so, but it, it was 2019 that I last played the game. So I was like, you know, three years. But yes, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure they set it up. So they, they dang well better do it. But also we've had, I don't feel like we've heard anything from them. So is it, is there even a chance of another game? Coming? There are rumors about a variety of things. Um, there are rumors that they have applied for um, a new name trademark for a game. There have been, um, you know, ideas that maybe they are hyping everything up and getting ready to sell. I, which honestly, I think it's a smart move. I think if they are not happy with the money that they're making, just making their one brand, then I think it makes sense to sell the brand to a game company that creates games Yeah, that can be like, okay, we're going to have Nancy Drew as one of our lines of games. I mean, they have no employees right now. Yeah. Just marketing people. Oh, yeah. So... They're going to outsource the games anyway. So I do think that they're working to really build up the brand and really make everyone happy and excited and rabid and foaming at the mouth for a new Nancy game so that they can mm -hmm. get the hype up, get somebody really interested, and then sell it off. I think that's what they are hoping for. I think it's entirely possible because partially when we've talked about this before, Nancy Drew started to gain traction on Twitch. And like, I've been on Twitch for a long time and I have played the games off and on for a long time. And, you know, 2016, 2017, 2018, there really was not a whole lot. Like every time I looked when I played, there was not a whole lot of Nancy Drew. There was not a whole lot of Nancy Drew streamers. I wasn't getting people in happening to look for that niche game. Because, like, you know when you're playing that niche mm -hmm. game, you sometimes get a lot of new people coming in, whether they follow or not, but just coming in because that's, like, such a favorite game of them. And for them to see someone playing such a niche game, they get so excited. But like, that wasn't happening with Nancy Drew. And it was, like, 2019... There started, it was like a ripple mm. through everyone. The hype for Midnight in Salem. Would Midnight in Salem be good? Would it live up to the Nancy Drew? And it was like suddenly I saw some bigger streamers picking up the games, reminiscing, especially girl streamers or female streamers, reminiscing about, you know, the old times of, like, as a kid, you know, huddling together in front of a laptop with their friend, playing the mm -hmm. game. And there was, like, this week where I swear on everything, every person I saw suddenly had discovered Nancy Drew <laughs> Shadow at the Water's Edge. And everyone was streaming it. And they were like, man, I really love this. This is so good. Which, granted, that is a classic. Mm -hmm. Like, I really love that one. They fully went the Japanese horror, and I absolutely loved that about it. And and I was like, oh my goodness, it, <laughs> suddenly people know Nancy Drew. I've never met another person who knew Nancy Drew except for, like, you know, my couple of friends. And so it was like, there was suddenly there was hype about it. And then Midnight in Salem came out, and it was it was actually huge. Like, there was actually a lot of people and a lot of bigger people who who played it the day it came out like the second came out started streaming it well they were doing you know promotions and contests and whatnot for people pre-ordering the game true um they do this for a lot of their games one of my favorite things that they do is they routinely are like 
the first 500 people who order or pre-order a game from like herinteractive.com or a specific game are going to receive a single Coco Kringle candy bar. It cracks me up. But they were doing, oh, it wasn't Midnight in Salem. It was Sea of Darkness. When they were doing Sea of Darkness, they were giving out Microsoft Surfaces. They had a contest for pre-orders where one random person would win tickets to Iceland. Like, so they were doing a lot of those kind of promo pieces and people, you know, had mixed feelings about those kind of big promos, especially when there was layoffs happening. Right. The thing is, though, for at least from my perspective of what I was seeing on Twitch, the people who were playing it and suddenly playing it, they weren't following this. Like, they mm. weren't seeing mm-hmm. all of the marketing. They were simply interested in it because they had heard the rumblings of the hype of the game. They had no idea necessarily the, what the Nancy Drew games were, who Nancy and Drew And it's spooky. It's about witches. Yeah, yeah. And, it, like, th- some of them just had absolutely no context of Nancy Drew. Had no idea, but, like, they heard... Mm the rumblings there was the small bit of hype and somehow it had so much hype there were so many i wish i knew like what what that mm. the the uh category peaked at for viewers like i really wish i would have looked because it it was truly mind blowing and then after that there was suddenly like and and you talked about this when you were talking about your twitch journey in the uh, last episode there started to be a nancy drew streaming community like I after that that game suddenly people started streaming it more they started to think or say to themselves you know even if not very many people come and watch because of the nostalgia because I love this game I want to stream it and we just you know you Ruby Abby a ton of people started streaming it and it was it was beautiful I cried a little bit and like yeah so i i think they could get enough of the hype they could show enough of the love for this game for this series for this character that a company would buy the rights and take it over my only worry is would they do it justice i feel like that would be the big fear i think hopefully enough people shared their feelings about midnight in salem that there should be a really good, yep, <laughs> should be a good amount of feedback to take on into the next venture. I wait. Did you know about Amelia Darnell before I told you about this? I have been hearing rumblings about Amelia Darnell pretty soon after I started streaming, because, or after I started streaming Nancy Drews, because as soon as I started and joined this I community, think I was one of the first to tell you. Probably, yeah. I think I was, because I think I had stumbled across this game before I played Salem. I must have. I really must have. I think that's what happened. So, I, yeah, because I was doing my first playthrough, beginning to end, going through each of the games, and I don't know how I found it. I must have been Googling something about Nancy Drew, and I, I saw it. It was, it was like a story about how, uh, talking about them, you know, uh, getting rid of firing or parting ways with um oh lonnie manila lonnie manila no M- yes <laughs> you struggled and then i like what anyways and they talking about how she had started talking to a group i thought it was the community but i guess maybe some of the original game devs also joined in yeah and they had been, you know, they were they were upset about Milani, Milani, no, Milani being laid off, and they were, I think, worried about the new game, and then frustrated when the new game did come out, and they had started working on a Nancy Drew esque game, and obviously the main character would be Amelia Darnell, and is going to be voiced by. Lonnie Manila. So we get we get Nancy Drew as a not Nancy Drew. And But Amelia is gonna be an early twenties female detective. So she did get aged up a bit. I think she works she just graduated 
with her degree. Oh my gosh, hold on. Yeah, I think so. But also, I like that she's early 20s because to me, Nancy Drew was early 20s. Like, even though I knew theoretically she was in high school, to me, she was always early 20s. Which, for some reason, as a child, that made her more relatable to me. Like, I liked that she was like that. <laughs> don't ask me why. I don't know. But, yeah. So, I guess, yeah. I She must be catering to the the, like, original Nancy Drew fans or, like, the people who grew up with mm-hmm. it and aged with Nancy. And there is a Twitter They give, I would say, semi-regular updates on it. You you get little teasers of, you know, art as they finish it or maybe some plot as they finish it. Yeah, and they are airtight underscore alibi. Yes, which I thought was funny. It made me think about alibi and ashes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I don't think there is a estimate for when it will be done but i think they had made some like huge or like monumental progress the past couple months like got some much needed people working on it that they needed to maybe because this is not speed up the process but get things moving yeah most of the people working on this this is not their day job so most of the people doing this are absolutely just volunteering their time putting in the effort to create a game similar to the ones they love. Oh, and there is a demo. It's not, it's not very long. It's like a 10, five, 10 minutes, but I thought I quite enjoyed the demo. I don't know if you've played it, but I was like, Ooh, this is like a updated Nancy Drew game. Ooh. <laughs> so I can, it definitely gave me hope for the game and I'm, I'm really excited for it. The Nancy Drew we didn't know. We <laughs> or maybe the Nancy Drew we always wanted. Mm. <laughs> yes, but no pressure to the team. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. I think I think we're just we're gonna have to do a part two uh later on because there's so much more we could talk about about Nancy, but I learned a lot. I don't know if you did, oh, but yeah. I learned a lot. Mhm. Mhm. No, I had a grand old time <laughs> researching and a grand old time reading old articles about um what was going on when the new CEO came in and you know, the New York Times article calling Nancy the unbarbie, which again, fascinating. <laughs> oh my god. It truly is a rabbit hole going like looking at the company and watching her interactive and all the things they went through and the CEOs and how that affected things but they still managed to do you know one two games a year which is is wild and they had a tiny team I think it was like 50 people maybe um who were putting out two games a year which is incredible but I mean when you only have five characters in each game it it makes a lot more sense versus midnight in salem where they had you know twice the size of the cast and they had a bunch of locations which you really didn't interact with but they looked cool i guess i think it's more meaningful when you have the smaller cast like you really do get to know the characters grow attached to them uh especially because like, you see references to a lot of the people. Because there's so few people in each game, mm. like, a lot of them kind of stay throughout the series. They may not They're necessarily memorable. completely reappear in another game, but they will get referenced. Maybe we call them, you know, s- you know something. And so it, there is truly something special about having the smaller list and, and really bonding with the characters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And having them all be viable suspects. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think I think we're ready for tea party. Tea time. I need a sip. I'm parched. Well, you're a really I'm short ready. little tea party. But um, so I'm back in my hometown uh, for, you know, house sitting up my parents. <laughs> and we've been going out to dinner at a couple places and... 
the first place we went out to dinner, um, we were served by a girl who is, I think, a year younger than me in high school. And, you know, she had been a cheerleader and a whole thing. And we we recognized each other. And she was, you know, really, really nice. And it was just funny because I hadn't seen her probably since before I graduated. So, you know, it's been 11 years. Um, not a lot of people from my hometown stay in the hometown. So it just always throws me. Um, there isn't a, there isn't really a 20 something crowd that lives there. So you, it's really obvious when there is something there. Is there a reason why people don't typically stay around? Like it has really good schools it um so there are a lot of families who want to be there for schools but once their kids are grown then the parents want to move and so even if the kids the grown kids are still living with their parents then they all just scooch scooch there's no reason to stay where they are necessarily without the schools um because it's not super convenient to get into the closest city there's just If you're not there for the schools and some other, you know, reasons, then there's not really a true reason to stay, especially if you're in your 20s and trying to go off and make a career and a life for yourself. Why do your parents stay? Well, we've been trying to get them to move for truly so long um, to get closer (laughs) to us because it takes... They don't live that far away, but because of the routes you have to take, um, it takes like three hours to get to their Ah. house. So it's truly an all day excursion. So my parents are always like, oh, you should come over. You should come (laughs) hang out, spend time with us. And I'm like, well, if you lived, you know, less than an hour away by an hour is okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. An hour is fine. My sister moved. So she's. 12 minutes drive from me and so i'm over there all the time and my mother is just so jealous right come closer mom come closer and you can join the slumber party no you can also come and hang out with my sister's dogs who are your grand puppies because three hours turns into six hours right because you're saying it's three hours one way yeah like that's half a day already gone just having to drive right so yeah it's madness they served you you recognized yes so it was fine i dropped my phone case into my pizza because i got nervous but it's whatever um (laughs) and i just (laughs) wasn't expecting to see someone i knew and so i just kind of anyway it was a whole thing and then we left from that place to go get a drink and dessert at another place down the street And then um, one of the absolute most popular girls from my graduating class served us my cheesecake. And I, she recognized me, but I don't think she knew my name because she did not use it. And I was like, that's okay. That's fine. So did, did she try to say anything to you? Did she give you any looks or was it just kind of like, oh, I recognize you. She was really friendly. She was just like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. And so we had a lovely little chat um just friendly happy perky Perky. (laughs) oh i don't know i wasn't popular but i knew i knew every kid Mm -hmm. in my class all 500 plus of them at one point in time i'd had a class with them i had talked to them and i was friend like friends not close friends but friends with i would say a vast majority of them Mm. which is interesting because i had gone to a a catholic school k through eight so when i went to high school i was like the new weird Mm -hmm. shiny Mm -hmm. toy like Mm -hmm. what the heck because a lot of them had known each other mainly from middle schools because we only had two middle schools you could come from and a lot of them knew each other so like a lot of people like knew like that they didn't know Mm. me However, I did know some of the girls because I had done a lot of in-house sports Mm -hmm. in elementary and middle school. But it was, yeah, it was very interesting. Freshman year, 
was an interesting year trying to get to know people, especially because for some reason, freshman year, every day in class was like, we're going to have a discussion where people have to be called to the front of the classroom and then they have to call on other people. And obviously because nobody knew me, they weren't going to call on me. And like, it was awkward because like you were required, you were essentially required to be called on when you didn't have the power to make sure someone called on you. It was, it was absolutely terrible. But I do remember his history this one day in history one of the popular kids he finally he had the bravery to call on me he was like squinting at my name sign trying to figure out how to say my name and then he ended up sitting next to me and i ironically became kind of good friends with the popular guys the like really jockey popular guys and suddenly it was all okay and i became friends with a lot of people and i talked to everybody and there is like a subsection of like popular jock guys who are really sweet. And they like Yeah. Yeah, and they will be friends with people and you're like, what yeah. are you doing? What's happening here? Oh, I loved I loved them. I loved sitting next to in class and they would so my last name, I'm going to dox myself, was Hool. And they would, uh, they thought that was so funny. And they'd be like, quit, quit hooling around or fool me once. <laughs> shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. And like, they, <laughs> they had a lot of, they, they went with it. And so I was often referenced as Hool or I would he- hear that like, shouted down the hallways it really touched my heart i felt like i was on the football team <laughs> just I a to star be on player team. I was like i am i am one with the jocks i'm getting called by my last name i made it yes <laughs> it was truly it was, oh, it was so good i will say my really good my really good friends were like i freaking love the band nerds i love the sh- heck out of them i was not a band nerd but those are the kids. Those are the fun ones. Strange but fun. Theater. Loved me, my theater kids. Those are probably... <laughs> yeah! Love me! I was also my theater kid. I was a theater kid! Let's go. Loved them. Those are like my simpatico. I was not in either of those things. But boy, did I love those kids. And I loved going and supporting them. Going to the concerts. Going to the theater. I was like... That's my that's my kid. That's my baby. <laughs> so that's interesting. I always like I I like seeing people when I'm like walking around because a lot a lot of the like parents stay in this town. The kids might not, but the parents do. So you'll see the kids and like like I'll see a lot of my classmates in like Target or whatever because they gone shopping for their parents or whatever. And I don't know. I love it. It's fun to see where they've grown and it always touches my heart that they remember me because a lot of them like we weren't good friends but like we were friends and so I'm always like I touched your little heart (laughs) (laughs) I was also that kid I was that nerdy kid who carried the popular kids because I did my homework and I did it well and they definitely would come over to me and be like so uh (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Next episode, I guess, I don't know the way to talk about it, but, like, I think we're going to be talking about, like, what is gaming in 2022? Like, what is gaming now? If that kind of makes sense. And, like, maybe, like, what's the current technology for gaming and, like, what's coming out this year and, you know, that kind of, that kind of stuff, which I'm actually kind of excited for. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Okay. Yes, please leave a review. We want that. Spread the love. We want to be... I don't know. That's all I got. I don't know. Let me, Give me out Amazing. of here. Amazing. I love it. Okay. We love you all. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>